Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Welcome to worship at uh, St. John's Lutheran Church's mobile site in the Coleman family's dining room on this third Sunday of Easter. Uh, before we begin worship, I have a couple of announcements. Uh, the first is I want to say thank you very much to Jocelyn Snyder, to the Bush family, to Tom Redfoot for uh, taking part in today's worship service. And of course, thanks again to Andy Yost for uh, compiling uh, these videos that we send him together into one worship service. I want to uh, let you know that uh, because of the uh, coronavirus restrictions, uh, we had to lay Hank Hotalling to rest in a private service, uh, just a couple of family members and myself um, at the cemetery. And uh, we will have a memorial service for Hank when we're given the all clear. Uh, but for now, the time came for him to commit his ashes to the ground. And so I wanted you to know that we did that in a warm and loving way uh, this past week. You can see that I'm in front of, if you watched last week, a bit of an Easter, a different Easter garden this Sunday. Uh, this is, by my decree, Dress Down Sunday. My soul is hanging here uh, with its repaired wounds, as I spoke about on Easter. And uh, I have behind me uh, the remnants of uh, hyacinth, and I have haliborus, and I have the remainders uh, of the lily that we had um, on Easter morning. Uh, gardens don't last forever, but uh, new flowers blossom and come to take their place. And so we adjust, don't we, in this life? And that is, uh, that's what we're doing today. Let's take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Yeah. 
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia.
Let us pray. O oh God, your Son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith, that we may see him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized from one to from one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promise is for you and your children, and all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord of God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments, and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from the corrupt generation. For, so those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will partially accord to their deeds, live in revenant fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. 
He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from your heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God, the word of the, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Two of them were going to a village called Emus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all the things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk alone? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in, the, in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all of, the, all of the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things have took place. Moreover, some of the women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary to the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts and hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. sermon, this uh, coronavirus era online YouTube sermon has a, uh, a refrain. And when I hold my finger up, I'd like you to join me in it. And the refrain is, keep the door open just a crack. Keep the door open just a crack. A couple of stories. Uh, the first is, this was, wow, this was over 20 years ago, a long time ago. Uh, coming up, I guess, on 30 years ago, 
I, I got a job teaching and directing the writing center at Mercier's College here in Erie, now it's Mercier's University. And uh, I interviewed for the job and I, I felt I did pretty well in that interview, really needed that job. And after the interview, weeks passed, weeks passed. And I thought, oh, you know what, I better, I better move on, I better find something else. Um, but finally, after, after, I don't remember how many weeks it was, but after I had, in my own mind and heart, kind of closed the door on that job, and I got to tell you, the Coleman family really needed that job. I closed the door on it, and um, so finally I thought, well, hey, if I didn't get it, what have I got to lose, you know? So I called the uh, de chair of the English department, and I said, you know, I, I just wanted to check in kind of one last time. I haven't heard anything, and uh, so I'm assuming I didn't get the position. And the chair of the English department said, you mean they haven't called you yet? I said, no, I haven't heard anything. Well, now, she didn't tell me that I had the job, but it gave me reason to believe that maybe I'd closed the door too early. And, and boy, I tell you what, if you've been through something like this, you know, you, it's hard to think of anything else. You uh, just kind of torture yourself thinking about it, and feeling sad about it. Well, after all of that time, finally, I did get the phone call and I got the job. And I worked there for about six years. Uh, and that was one of the times in my life that I learned, leave the door open, just a crack. Maybe things will turn out differently than you thought they would. Another very quick story. Uh, this was a story about a couple who very early in my ministry attended uh, the church that I was a pastor of in Erie. And then they, they stopped coming and uh, I think, well, they, you know, they moved on. And out of the blue, I got a call from them, uh, from the woman. And you know, so long ago, I don't even remember their names anymore, which is kind of sad. But um, they said that uh, she was, the woman was pregnant, uh, but that something had gone terribly wrong. And so they, I said, well, you want me to come over? And, and they said, could you please? Um, so I went over and I, I can picture right now sitting at their, their dining room table. Uh, she was a med school student and he was a teacher and uh, they didn't have any kids. And she was hit, sitting right here and he was sitting right there and they were destroyed because they were told that uh, the child that she was carrying, uh, it was hopeless. That if the child did survive to birth, it would be hopelessly uh, impaired, would need uh, multiple surgeries, including heart surgeries. Uh, so what should they do? Well, uh, we talked, and we didn't talk a whole bunch after that, but we talked, and uh, well, lo and behold, imagine their torture, but eventually this child was born child needed one surgery. I believe it was a boy. <laughs> My memory ain't what it should be. <laughs> it was a boy and uh, needed one, maybe two surgeries, if I remember correctly. And I'm thinking that that child probably has his driver's license about now. Leave the door open. Just a crack. Because as my wife, Kathy, is so fond of saying, you never know. <laughs> One last story, it's not done yet, and it's uh, going on right now. When, when Kathy uh, and Elena and Mike and I moved to Columbus, Ohio for seminary in 1997, we uh, met a lot of people, and one, one family that we met <clears throat> was the Koch family. And the Koch family had a, a son, uh, Michael. It was very small. <clears throat> he had, I believe it was sp spina bifida. And <clears throat> Kathy's nodding because she's uh, taking this video. So uh, yeah, spina bifida. 
and he his legs were uh, kind of splayed out like this. And he, he walked, he had to walk like this. He was very, couldn't run. I mean, his run was just bup, 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 back and forth. The sweetest, cutest, most wonderful boy. Um, but, and he, and he was a playmate with Micah. Uh, they obviously couldn't do a lot of sports kinds of things together, but there was a little play, playground and swing set outside the front door, and they would be there together. So, we all graduated and uh, moved on. Years passed, and uh, through the miracle of Facebook, we uh, Coleman family kind of reconnected with the Koch family. We learned that uh, Michael had uh, gone to college. He had uh, received some kind of degree in healthcare in the healthcare field, so had been working at a hospital. Uh, much loved and well received by his colleagues there. Uh, but over the last couple of months, uh, Michael's been having some kind of health trouble that's difficult to diagnose. diagnose. You know, he, he'd had health hiccups his whole life, really. And so he was kind of known as the, the miracle kid. Well, just a few days ago, uh, I learned that uh, Michael had a devastating stroke. He was actually showing up for work at the hospital, which was fortuitous. Of course, they, folks have to have their temperatures taken and get checked out before they go in. And as that was going on, uh, Michael had a massive stroke. And uh, all in this one message, that was revealed. And it was revealed that uh, he was not expected to survive. He'd had surgery. The, the, his, the brain bleed was just too severe. And uh, so they were actually moving to... Uh, Kind of put in motion the organ donor protocol for him and so well, we we were sad about that around here prayed about it and uh well then a day or two later i can't remember exactly uh, a message came and by the way live television dogs barking outside so we'll have to put up with it but the uh the uh, message came through that michael's neurosurgeon visited him and that on at the uh, neurosurgeon's request Michael opened his eyes and he moved uh, the one side of his body and gripped the neurosurgeon's hands and so there was a chance they were going to move from organ donor protocol to let's see if we can get Michael back to some semblance of health again. Maybe he would live. Well, you know, we were all so sure that Michael was gonna die. And you know what, he may yet. Matter of fact, we all will at some point, right? But who'd have thunk that Michael, who was written off, would have the chance to live. Maybe there was some hope. Leave the door open just a little. Leave the door open just a crack. It's become my motto in this life to always remember that every door in my life Try to leave it open just a little bit. I think this is a real lesson for this Sunday and Easter, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Leave the door open just a crack. Maybe what I'm so sure about, maybe I don't quite know. Maybe the, the person I write off, and not just, not just in health, but in other ways, is hopeless. Well, maybe I ought to just Leave the door open, just a crack. The job that I thought I wasn't going to get. You know what? Leave the door open, just a crack. Well, you know, the, the two disciples who were on their way to Emmaus in the gospel lesson for today, <clears throat> they, um, 
they learned this lesson too. Because the man they had followed and loved and learned from and actually kind of bet their lives on, he died. Well, end of story, right? Remember, leave the door open just a crack. Leave the door open just a crack, especially if you're a Christian. This is not to say that, obviously, that things always turn out okay. Lazarus came forth from the tomb, but you know what? Came the day he had to go back in again. No, this isn't, this isn't a, a thought, leave the door open just a crack, that has a big smiley face on it. No, this is something deep in here that, well, you know what? It kind of burns in your heart if you're a Christian. Because when you believe in God, nothing's ever hopeless. The, the door is always ajar just a bit. The disciples finally figured out who was that companion on the road talking to them. They, they recognized him, of course, when they sat down for a meal together. And they said, we're not our hearts burning within us. While he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us, that same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Well, my dear friends, one way or another, we are all on our road to Emmaus. And I have the feeling that a lot of times Jesus appears to us on that road, the risen Lord. We know nothing about it. And because of that, and because he is risen, remember, leave every door open. Just a crack. Jesus can come in. Amen. <laughs>
confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing in the risen life of Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church. Remove all that hinders us from sharing your love. Raise up faithful preachers and teachers to lead your people. Heal our divisions. Unite us at your table. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the earth, protect animals whose habitats are endangered. Grant bountiful sunshine and rainfall for fields, pastures, and orchards. Bless those whose labors bring food to our tables. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the nations, give all leaders wisdom and courage to work for the common good. Strengthen disaster relief workers, peacemakers, and all whose contributions to society go unnoticed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in need, draw near to those who have lost hope. Provide food for the hungry and shelter for the homeless. Comfort the grieving and heal the sick, especially those who are affected by the coronavirus pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our congregation, empower our ministries of outreach and hospitality. Nourish us as we worship separately today and sustain us until we can be together again in your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With thanksgiving, we remember those who have died in faith. Bring us with them to the fullness of your glory with all your saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Joining our voices with your faithful ones in every time and place, we offer our prayers in the name of the Risen One, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.